Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be discussing a Canadian penny stock in the copper mining exploration space. The company name is Alpha Copper Corporation, and I'm super excited about this sector as a whole, but specifically this company for a number of reasons we're going to lay out in today's video. Now before we get into it, please take a second, hit the like button you guys, it's a huge help to myself and the channel. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I personally respond to each and every comment, so it's a great way to get in touch with me. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be discussing Alpha Copper Corporation. You can see here, trades under the ticker symbol ALCU on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Now they closed out last week's session down seven cents per share or about 7.4% to close out at 88 cents Canadian. Now that being said, this company has been on a tremendous run over the last couple of months. Really in contrast to most of the penny stocks or small caps we've seen across the stock market right now, Alpha Copper has found a way to really succeed over the last couple of months despite the treacherous market conditions. And if we actually look back to the start of December there, so December 3rd, 2021, this was a company that was trading at 25 cents Canadian. And even with this pullback that we saw at the end of last week's trading, the company is still up tremendously over the last few weeks. So super encouraging here. We're gonna talk about exactly why that is in today's presentation. In terms of video format here, you guys, we're gonna go into the Alpha Copper Corporation website, take a look at what this exploration company is all about. Then we've got a really interesting article that lays out some great bullish factors around this company. And then to close things out, we'll jump into the investor presentation and take a deeper dive look into Alpha Copper's business model and the different assets within their portfolio. Now, before we get into all that, the other thing I wanted to point out here, you guys, in terms of market cap, this is definitely still a small cap player or a penny stock in every sense of the word, which you guys know I love. So again, despite the great run we've seen in share price over the last couple of months here, this company still trades well under $20 million Canadian and still has a ton of room to run moving forward. And quickly before we jump over to the Alpha Copper website, I did want to pull up the US listing here as well. So if you're looking to trade on the OTC in the United States, trades under the ticker symbol ALCUF. And you can see here on the US side of things, they closed out the week down six cents to finish out at 69 cents US. Now to kick things off, for those of you maybe who haven't heard of Alpha Copper, I did want to jump over to the company's website or the About Us page. So you can see here, Alpha Copper is exploring for Canada's next big copper strike. And it would appear, based on some of the stuff we're going to discuss in today's video, that they may have already found that strike. So if you scroll down a little bit here, you can see Alpha Copper, again, CSE listed under ALCU, is a Canadian mineral exploration company focused on advancing our Indita and OK Over or OK projects located in British Columbia, Canada. Now both projects already contain numerous drill ready targets and geophysical anomalies. The Indita property is especially exciting given its proximity and geological similarity to Northwest Copper's Quinica and Stardust discoveries, which are some of the richest discoveries or deposits known in North America. Now Alpha Copper's other property, the OK Project or the OK Over North Lake Zone, historic resource indicates 86.8 million tons of grade 0.31 copper. So both projects here, are both properties you guys, extremely exciting and extremely rich deposits. You can see both located in British Columbia here, one near Victoria and the other kind of halfway between Prince Rupert and Fort St. John. And we're actually gonna take a closer look at each of these properties a little bit later in the investor presentation. Now with that being said, in the intro I mentioned a really interesting article that lays out a great bullish thesis for copper in general and specifically Alpha Copper Corporation, and that's this article here. So I'll leave a link to this report in the video description below. You can check it out for yourself. This is from miningindustryreport.com, and it's titled The EV Boom and 200 plus billion dollar in copper related infrastructure spending speak to untapped potential. 
Soaring inflation and supply demand crisis are a potential catalyst that have Alpha Copper Corporation ALCU stock skyrocketing. And that's exactly what we talked about and saw on the chart just a couple of seconds ago. So they really lay out a couple of top reasons or catalysts that they feel Alpha Copper Corporation still has a ton of room to grow despite this recent share price appreciation that we noted a few slides ago. Now I'll quickly go through each one of these four potential catalysts, then we'll go into them in a little bit more detail. Now the first one here will really speak to you technical traders out there talking about the bullish indicators on the Alpha Copper Corporation stock itself. The second one, copper bull market due to unprecedented demand, which we're gonna talk about various different avenues and facets within that point. Third point, and really related to the second, is the growing electric vehicle boom. As we've talked about in previous videos here, you guys, EV technology or electric vehicles require much more copper than traditional or combustion engine style automobiles. There's the greening economy, so things like solar panels, wind turbines, stuff like that and then Biden's huge infrastructure bill that are all dependent on copper. And the final point here, you guys, is really the two projects that we just mentioned on the Alpha Copper Corporation website, two impressive projects in very mining friendly zones or regions here within Canada. Now the intro to this article is really interesting. It talks about some of the turbulence we've seen in the market so far in 2022. The Fed rate hike obviously was scaring a lot of investors and really shook the market out. But despite all of that, we're still seeing Alpha Copper rally in a massive way. And they're up as much as 55% in the first 18 days into January 2022. So we looked at the chart. Obviously the share price has changed slightly based on the time this article was put out, but we've seen tremendous growth in Alpha Copper share price and market cap, despite this wild market that we've witnessed, really across small caps as a whole, and now starting to bleed into some of the bigger tech plays and market in general. And that's really where Alpha Copper Corporation comes in. And for the reasons we just discussed above, really seems to be a great place to park your money right now as an inflation hedge and as a way to capitalize on a lot of these macro bullish trends that we're gonna talk about in more detail right now. So in terms of point one here, the bullish indicators or technical indicators related to Alpha Copper stock, you can see in a chart from January here, so this is January 5th to 18th, the company is up over 55%, which is phenomenal given the overall market conditions. If you scroll down a little bit further and you look back to the middle of April and you run that out through to current day, you're looking at about a 600% return on this penny stock. So again, phenomenal growth here, you guys, that really any investor would be extremely happy to have within their portfolio, especially at this point in time. And as you start to move into some of the technical indicators, whether you're talking about short, medium term, or long-term bullish technical indicators, things like MACD moving averages, we're really starting to see a flash of bullish indicators across the board for Alpha Copper. And we're actually gonna talk about this point towards the end of the video, but ALCU has a float of about 19 million shares, you guys and nearly 39% of those shares are held by insiders. So of all the companies we've talked about on this channel, Alpha Copper has one of the largest insider ownership percentages we've seen of any company. And that's obviously phenomenal when you start to see big moves in the share price like this because there's fewer shares available to the general public and that makes the moves in share price much more aggressive and much more exciting as an investor in this company. Now the second bullish point laid out in this article, you guys, really talks about the economic environment, so the macroeconomic environment that's really set up well for precious metals, specifically copper. And this was actually a learning to me. If you scroll through this article, you guys, you can see obviously inflation is spiking near 40 year highs right now, but traditionally copper is seen as a strong hedge against inflation because its properties are essential for day-to-day -day life. So unlike some other precious metals like gold, for example, copper is used day in and day out for things that we consider basic necessities at this point in time. It conducts heat and electricity, it's malleable, and it's commonly used in electrical equipment such as wiring and motors. So if you think about heat and electricity, those are really two of the most basic elements of survival in modern day society. It's also valuable for construction, for example, used in things like roofing and plumbing, 
and industrial machining such as heat exchangers. So there's a number of use cases here, you guys, whether we're talking industrial, commercial, or residential, and that's what makes copper a great place to park your money during times of peak inflation. And as an extension of that, reason three really talks about this increasing demand based on a number of new industries that are starting to emerge. So the electric vehicle boom, greening economy, and the infrastructure bill from the Biden administration in the United States are really placing added demand on the global copper supply. And this is actually something we've discussed in previous videos on the channel. Copper is an integral part of sustainable energy initiatives because of its reliability, efficiency, and performance. Its superior electrical and thermal conductiveness increases the energy efficiency of countless energy driven systems like things like wind turbines, electric vehicles, and even solar panels that rely on electric motors and transformers. So if we actually first take a look at electric vehicles, which are all the craze right now, and we compare those to traditional internal combustion engines or automobiles, you can see conventional cars on average use between 18 to 49 pounds of copper per vehicle. Once you move into the hybrid electric vehicle class, you're up to about 85 pounds of copper. Plug-in hybrids are 132 pounds and battery electric vehicles, you guys, are 183 pounds of copper per unit or per vehicle. Now take that one step further when you look at hybrid electric buses, 196, or battery electric buses, a mind-blowing 814 pounds of copper in each and every bus. So as the economy and politicians and governments across the world start to shift to a more green economy or green energy, we're gonna to start to see a tremendous increase in the demand of copper as an input to a lot of these products. Now on top of that, and as you can imagine, a big part of that US infrastructure bill are things like transmission lines, which are heavily dependent on copper, wind turbines, so a three megawatt wind turbine can contain up to 4.7 tons of copper, which was absolutely mind blowing to me. Not to mention you guys, a lot of times the place where they actually install these turbines is super remote. So they're gonna need extensive cabling or wires to connect to the actual grid. The motors and generators, so we talked about that in the electric vehicle point. And then even things like solar power. So solar power generation requires 5.5 tons of copper per megawatt. And if you actually break down the $201 billion US infrastructure bill into the various different components, you can see there's 39 billion to modernize public transit. So things like electric buses would fall into that category, 65 billion to invest or improve in the nation's broadband infrastructure networks. So obviously reliant on copper wires and connections, 17 billion in port infrastructure, along with 25 billion in airport infrastructure, seven and a half billion for zero and low emission buses and ferries, so directly related to public transportation, 7.5 billion would go towards building nationwide network of plug-in electric vehicle chargers. So again, supporting that EV transition we mentioned above, and then $65 billion, you guys, to rebuild the electrical grid, which is gonna include thousands of miles of new power lines and expanding the capability of renewable resources or renewable energy. So if you think about it, really any one of these categories on its own would represent a huge opportunity for players in the copper industry. And put together, you guys, this really represents an incredible catalyst that the world really hasn't seen before. So if you think about it, they've essentially put together a shopping list here, and each and every one of these items on the list requires a large amount of copper as an input material. And that's really a perfect segue to the fourth bullet point here, which talks about a severe imbalance between supply and demand in relation to copper. Now on the demand side, obviously all the factors we just talked about there, and on the supply side, we're challenged there as well because they're really starting to find fewer and fewer high grade deposits around the world that contain copper. So if you look at it by the numbers here, you guys, there were 224 copper deposits discovered between 1990 and 2019, so about a 29 year period. Only 16 of those deposits were actually found in the last 10 years of that time frame. So although they're still finding deposits around the world, these are not high grade and they're not really viable for mining activity. So based on that imbalance, there's estimates in the copper industry that we're gonna have an annual shortfall or deficit of about 4.7 million metric tons by the year 2030. 
And if copper supply cannot keep up with demand, which is what we're actually seeing happening in practice, it could pose an even more, they call mouthwatering opportunity for explorers like Alpha Copper Corporation that have rights to these extremely high grade copper deposits. And that's really the last point within this article, which talks about these impressive projects, which are located in Canada in a mining friendly region. And as we discussed, you guys, there's the Indita project, which comprises of 16 mineral claims totaling about 3,200 hectares. We're gonna look at this one in more detail in the investor presentation. And the second location here is the OK Over or OK project, which is comprised of 11 mineral claims totaling just under 4,000 hectares and is actually situated on the south coast of British Columbia. So if you think about all these various factors laid out in this article and you look at them holistically, it's really no wonder Alpha share price has been on such a run over the last couple of months. But the thing that's exciting to me is we're actually in the very early stages of a lot of these bullish catalysts actually coming to fruition. So if you think about the infrastructure spending bill, the supply demand imbalance, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of some of these multi-year, multi-decade type of bullish tailwinds. And I think that really could continue to support and propel the share price on companies like Alpha Copper for years and years to come. Now, if we jump over to the Alpha Copper investor presentation, so this is available on their website. I'll leave a link in the video description below. They really call out some specific bullet points in relation to the two properties or deposits that they have here in Canada. So it's labeled two of the most promising copper discoveries ever made in Canada. They talk about some of the drill results here and some comments from other CEOs in the industry. They talk about the location of these properties. So located in the same neighborhood as some of the richest copper deposits ever found in North America. Consistent results, so more than 40 years of exploration and documentation at these various different copper deposits. They talk about transportation factors, so whether that's access to deep water ports or forestry roads that can provide access to these locations. And then finally here, you guys, there's multiple developed mines in these locations that are already producing high grade copper, which have really proven out the model and provide access to local expertise, manpower or workers, and the specialized equipment needed to actually mine copper on an industrial scale. Now in terms of the neighborhood, we're talking about the Indita property here, which is located physically and geologically in the same neighborhood, as mentioned, as some of Canada's most exciting recent copper discoveries. So you can see on the map here, you guys, here's the project right here. And each one of these orange circles represents another copper deposit in the region. And as you can see, right adjacent to this project is the Stardust project. This is an extremely high grade copper and gold deposit, one of the most famous ones discovered here in Canada. And it's actually located only 20 kilometers north of the actual Alpha Copper site. So at the Stardust location, the property featured a 2.2 kilometer corridor of mineralization. This is really unheard of in the mining industry, you guys. And in addition to all of this, you can see access to actual infrastructure. So railway, power lines and highway access that makes mining these sites really a lot more feasible. Now in terms of the OK Over property or the OK property, that's the one that comprises of 11 mineral claims just under 4,000 hectares. You can see this is located on the south coast of British Columbia. And one of the big factors here, you guys, is this is only 25 kilometers away from Powell River's deep water port facility. So in terms of infrastructure, you have access to one of Canada's best deep water ports within 25 kilometers and you're only 145 kilometers northwest of Vancouver. So this provides well-established forestry roads which give access to the property, low cost access for drill crews and equipment. So these are things you need to start to consider when you're looking at developing mining properties and in both situations or both locations here you guys, Alpha Copper really has a competitive advantage. Now in terms of management at Alpha Copper, the company is led by Daryl Jones, who's the president and CEO. He's got over 15 years experience with capital markets and an established financial network of individuals and investors. Mr. Jones was an investment advisor with PI Financial Corporation Canada, where he was actually responsible for raising significant, what they call risk capital for high growth companies in all types of sectors, but really focused specifically on natural resources. So when you think about applying that type of experience 
to this industry here. It's a perfect fit for Alpha Copper and Daryl has really surrounded himself by a ton of experience here in terms of the senior leadership team. So to wrap things up here, you guys, I really wanted to summarize my bullish thesis on copper in general, but specifically Alpha Copper Corporation. And for me, it really boils down into a couple of things. So we're seeing tremendous demand for copper around the world. Again, if we look at the electric vehicle market alone, you can see the demand for copper in these new electric vehicles, specifically public transit vehicles, is exponentially higher than traditional or conventional cars. This is a major trend we're seeing around North America and really globally here. And I think this is going to put tremendous demand on copper supply for years and years to come. In addition to the tremendous push we're seeing towards electric vehicles, the Biden administration has come out with a $201 billion infrastructure deal that really touches a number of different industries, all of which are dependent or reliant on copper. And underlining all of this, you guys, Alpha Copper has two of the best projects in North America. They've got great access. They're located in mining friendly zones and they're in regions that are known to contain some of the richest copper deposits in North America. So for those reasons, when you look at it from a macro scale, you guys, the demand for copper is going nowhere but up for years and years to come. If you look at the supply side, they've got some of the best deposits in North America, Canada specifically. And when you put those two factors together, Alpha Copper Corporation really starts to make a lot of sense as a potential investment. So for those reasons, you guys, I definitely think this one is worth a look. Throw it on your watch list. Let me know what you come up with. If you find out any information that maybe I didn't touch on in today's video, I'd be super interested to hear in the comment section below. If you're still watching at this point, hopefully you found some value. So make sure you hit the like button before you leave. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. As mentioned, I'll leave a link to the Alpha Copper website along with the article discussed in today's presentation in the video description below. So feel free to take a look. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.